Some people identify as a man. Some people identify as a tree. And some people identify as Melvins. Melvins are the guys who destroy their potential each and every day. Wakes up, scrolls on his phone, and reads about the latest YouTube drama. Then faps three times until his entire body is numb. And then he crawls out from under the covers onto the floor. He scurries from under the fridge because it's Friday and his buddies want to go get drunk in the garage. Melvin gets hammered. Talking about that one time in the 12th grade when a girl said something to him and how he totally could have smashed her if he tried. He drinks more copium and goes home and lays in bed hammered. He's got the spins and he can't sleep. He decides to fap for the fifth time today. But because he's so drunk, he starts violently puking all over himself. He pukes so much it covers his entire face, causing him to start choking. In the room next door, Chad is sitting on his computer, typing up a post in Socializer School, telling everybody about how many girls he banged this week. He hears a faint beta male noise from the wall. Oh my God, is that Melvin? Chad runs over and kicks down the door. Damn it, Melvin, I'm not gonna let you die. Hits Melvin so hard that Melvin goes flying across the room, saving his life. Chad picks up Melvin and holds him in his arms like a baby and whispers in his ear, it's going to be okay, Melvin, but your poor lifestyle choices are destroying your potential as a man. Chad pulls out his phone and quickly replies to the three girls he is banging, including Melvin's sister. <laughs> He then sends a text message to one of the girls. Sorry, babe. My roommate Melvin is hitting absolute rock bottom and I need to spend tonight with him making sure that he's okay. Chad then opens up YouTube and pulls out a YouTube video by Denmo and hits play. All right, boys. So in today's video, I'm going to tell you about what was killing my potential when I was younger. And I know that that intro was kind of funny, but seriously, this nearly destroyed all of my potential. I have personally seen it destroy many of my friends' lives. So I'm going to share these lessons with you so that you can avoid making the same mistakes that I did. And if this is you right now, you're nodding your head like, fuck, this kind of sounds like me. This is how you can turn your life around very quickly. Now, when you are what I like to call a socializer, you're someone who is very outgoing, social, funny, you get invited out a lot. You tend to go one of two ways. One is you can channel all of that energy into one specific thing. Like for example, working very hard in school, becoming a businessman or a salesman or a comedian, or you can turn into an absolute degenerate and mess your life up. This is because when you are a charismatic, ambitious young man, life gives you a lot of opportunities. You can talk to women, you can make friends easily, and you're always getting invited to do fun things with other fun people. This is what I did mostly from the age of 23 to 25. Now I will say this too, if you work hard and remain disciplined 90% of the time and you let loose 10% of the time, you're gonna be okay. But most people are unable to do that. And it took me a very long time to learn this. So let's reel it back. Play that noise. Yeah, there it is. Before 16, I was a very hard worker. I was an artist and I was very good at drawing, making animations. I even had a YouTube channel when I was like 13 or so and I had a couple thousand followers. But halfway through high school, I switched schools and I didn't really have any good friends. So I basically had to join whatever group would take me. And I joined the stoner group. Now don't get me wrong. I preferred this group over others because they were all very fun guys. But that's my point. I traded my good grades caring about school and making art, for getting high with my buddies. <laughs> Each day at lunch, we would go out in the forest and get high. That's pretty much all we did. When you're 16, bro, one toke just nukes you to the moon. Like we used to hit these things called pails, which are basically like a two liter Pepsi bottle cut in half. And then you use another water bottle and put it in there with like little holes burnt in it. And then you use like a socket wrench as a bowl on top and you just brew an absolute milker, dude. And this would destroy us because it mixes in all the stuff in the bowl, obviously, but also like burnt plastic. And it literally makes you retarded for like four hours, bro. And we did this every day at school and then each weekend. So I went from like this artsy, ambitious kid to being totally happy, just going out pretty much every day of the week and just getting fucked up. I had other things I was good at, but because it was new and exciting, I was stupid at the time. So I just gave up on everything else. And this really impacted my performance in school. I stopped caring about tests and I stopped taking like university level math courses so I could get into a specific program I wanted to. Because at the time studying was considered gay. So it would just be uncool. 
to actually try hard in school. It's kind of funny looking back, like the kids that actually tried hard were looked at as losers. <laughs> so my point is though, I was like pretty talented at this age. I mean, I had no proof of this at the time, but look, as you can see, I've achieved a lot now. So you can believe me. Back then I did have a lot of potential and I wasn't using it at all. I just gave up all this because I was brain dead high all the time. I would eat pure candy or junk food, which caused me to have mad acne breakouts, especially like around my mouth. So girls that thought I was cute, they started to think I was greasy because I had pimples all the time, right? Now at the time I was making money by selling gaming items from Habba Hotel via PayPal. Long story for another day, but I would transfer that money to my bank account and I would use it to buy stuff. So instead of investing or something useful, I literally would just ball out on buying weed, booze and junk food at lunch. And if I did not break this cycle, this could have literally been my life for the rest of my life. That is why this is so important. So when you find yourself in this situation and you may be wondering, how do I get out of this? How do I find joy in other things besides booze and substances? When you do this enough, it actually messes with your emotional stability because you start to rely on these substances. And if you don't get them, then it messes with your head. Each night before I went to sleep, I would have to hit a bowl so I could fall asleep. Otherwise I would have insomnia. Each weekend, if I didn't go out with my buddies and do this, I'd feel like I was missing out. Literally, I felt like I was missing out if I didn't get wasted every weekend. And when you do this enough, it actually will lead to depression. Once I was out of high school at about 19, I started to get more tactical about this. I stopped getting high completely. It just was making me paranoid, so I just stopped. I would still drink, but I would only do it on weekends because I saw people around me just always being hung over, but also I saw people around me doing other stuff, you know? <laughs> Right? And I was not gonna go down that road. <laughs> I would have friends that would sneak away and they'd go to the bathroom. And for whatever reason, they had so much energy and they'd just come back out. I'd be like, hey, what were you doing in there? And they're like, oh, nothing, just had to make a phone call, right? But now I'm like, oh, I know what you were doing. Cause I'd be like, yo, can I come in? And they'd be like, no, 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 bro. Like we don't wanna mess up your life. And it's a really weird way to compliment somebody, right? Like friends of mine actually kept substances from me because they thought I had potential, but they didn't. That's wild. So anyways, when I was in college, I lived in a trap house with a bunch of other shitlords, and we basically started drinking pretty much every day. Me and my one roommate, Spencer, we used to raid the garbage bins near the residence buildings and we would carry them to the Lickbo because, you know, we didn't have a car. So we literally would do like these farmer walk carries of these huge bags of empty cans. And if we got enough, then we could actually afford to buy more beer. So we would save up for a 2-4. A 2-4 was like 25 to 30 bucks. So we could get one for free if we had like 250 to 300 cans. Since in Canada, you get 10 cents per beer can. And then me and my buddy would split that two for in one night, 12 beers each, and we would just get absolutely barnacled until we puked all over the place. <laughs> and then we would do the same thing the next day. We'd go and find everybody else's empties and we'd go and return them for money. Now, I remember one day we had a really good collection week. It was Sunday morning and we got all the Saturday cans. Plus on the way to the Lickbo, we decided to hit a suburban neighborhood and we wanted to raid all of their recycling bins too. It was really greasy. Like we were literally walking up beside people's houses. Desperate times, bro. We were walking down the street each carrying like four overflowing garbage bags. And I remember bro, like we were crossing this intersection and these bags were so torn up that they started rubbing up on each other and like one of the cans cut the other bag and simultaneously both of our bags ripped and basically exploded. So like just think like hundreds of cans spilling all over the street and the light went so like cars are honking their horns and we're like little cockroaches like crawling over the street like grabbing our cans. It was basically rock bottom. We had to wait for the lights to go red and then run out and grab more cans and then stuff the cans in our pants. It was fucking retarded. Now I was in school, so this was like how I got my booze money, you know? It is what it is. Until about 20, I was just degenerate like this, bro. And that's when I really started to take it easy on drinking. Now I share the story with you because I've literally done all those greasy things that YouTubers like me tell you not to do. I know people that it turned out way worse for, their life is all messed up and uh, all things considered, I turned out pretty good. But I do want you to really pay attention to this. From the age of 18 to 25, it's such an interesting time because you have this like super physiological energy. You can go out every night of the week. You don't get hung over. You can go in and write a test, go and hit weights, hang out with your friends the next morning and be totally fine. It's like this superhuman fuel. And I think that you can maintain this as well into your 30s, but definitely not if you're boozing hard like you did at this age. So what I'm saying is like, you should be using this energy that you have to propel your life forwards. If you use this energy right when you're a young man, it will make you into something incredible by the age of 30. 
but if you use it wrong, it can very easily ruin your life, ruin your momentum, and pretty much send you down a path of becoming a loser. Like I look back now at guys that I would party with from 16 to 20, and a lot of them are literally working minimum wage jobs, living with their parents, like no post-secondary education, and they're pretty much doing the same thing every weekend, just in the garage, ripping bong tokes, bro. Like that's depressing as hell. They are not living life. Their life is living them. And sometimes I randomly run into these guys at like Walmart or something and like their teeth are missing. And I'm like, that's you? Oh my God, bro. So if you do consider yourself ambitious, you're like an overachiever, you do want a great life in the future. And that's probably why you watch my channel. If not, subscribe, bro. Welcome. But if you're that person that like needs excitement like me, like how do you harness and rechannel this energy? Because you need something to replace that tempting activity. You need something productive or at the very least neutral. My suggestion is you set up challenging goals in three different categories. Category number one is you need something that makes you money. So getting a part-time job, learning an important skill, maybe a side hustle, maybe something on the weekends, that way you have money and you get really good at it the more time you put into it. So as you get older, this skill will really pay off. You know, for me, what I did was I went into the trades, but on my own time, I would also get really good at video editing and running YouTube channels. So I've been doing entrepreneurship for years now, even before I was doing YouTube. And I know a lot of you guys want to be YouTubers. One day I'll make some kind of course on how to teach you guys like, uh, you know, a personal brand or whatever. And if you are interested in that, send me an email, bro. Let me know because uh, if enough people are interested, I'll get started on that right away. The next challenge and goal you need to set is something that involves adventure, something to get your blood pumping. So like sports, hiking, traveling, going on adventures with your friends. These are all super important. You could still hang out with friends of yours that drink sometimes, but only after you've completed your priorities, right? See, that was my problem. I would be degenerate mode all the time, even though I did not deserve it or earn it. I didn't accomplish anything and basically rewarded myself for doing nothing. Now, the third thing you need to do is to replace drinking and substances with dating women. I know, I know, all the other self-improvement content creators tell you women are bad and you should avoid them. Let's be honest, just for a second. This is cope, bro. You are lying to yourself. Some of the most fun you will have in your entire life is casually dating and sleeping with women in your early to mid 20s. But guess what? From your early to mid 20s, you usually suck with women. Most men don't get good at this till their 30s, bro. And because of that, they are missing out on such a window of opportunity, bro. I want you to realize how much you can take advantage of just being in the social settings and situations you are in your early 20s. You could meet so many women that are around you and you can sleep with them or date them or whatever it is you wanna do. If you're in college or university right now, there's literally thousands of women around you, but you're not even sleeping with any of them because you have no charisma, you have no social skills and game. You just don't know what you're doing. I was making videos like this for fun, you know, like approaching people, doing pranks, but also, you know, talking to girls, getting their numbers and stuff. And I was getting all these views online and I kept getting emails from guys saying, yo, how do you do this? Like, can you make some kind of guide or something? So after thousands of people asking me, I created Denmo Social, Infield Unlocked, and then eventually I created an even better product called Socializer, a whole new course with like 20 hours of material. And in addition to this, I made it a community. So not only do you get the courses, 150 plus videos, including, you know, videos of me approaching girls to show you step by step, but you also get to join a community with other guys that are leveling up in all areas of life. That's what's great about this. You get the courses, you get the videos, you even get three hours a week where you can join a Q&A and ask me questions directly. So whatever situation you're in, I can help you with that girl problem. But what my favorite part is, there's like over 130 other guys in there and each day they're getting results, they're posting wins, they're like replying to you, helping you out. So it's like a community where you can get help and support from others. And that's usually all you need. Like even if you join and don't watch my courses, you don't watch any of my systems or my programs, this motivation just from being here alone will probably get you girls. Whatever situation you're in, man, socializer school can literally change your life. And yes, it's not for everybody, right? Like some people, they want to be lonely and scared and they're like, oh, well, I don't want to spend money. It's like, oh, okay. Well, if you did, you'd solve your problem and you'd get an ROI on your money because of all the time you saved now knowing how to do this. Like, I wish that this existed when I was 20. I would have bought it in a fucking heartbeat, bro. All right, just saying. And here's what's crazy too. I know a lot of you think that you're like too late in life to do this, right? You don't have to be young or old to become a socializer. My point is the longer it takes you to get good at this, the more girls that you're gonna miss out on. 
I highly recommend this to anybody at any age, but especially guys that are 25 or younger because it's so much easier to do this before you go like full on monk mode and you have like all these responsibilities. And also after 25, you're mostly competing with dudes that are in their 30s and they crush you in every category. Like I know a lot of you, your current strategy is like, oh, let me just make a dating profile or like, let me just watch like a free little video on YouTube. It's like, bro you're getting blown out of the water. And there's a reason why. You're not putting your money where your mouth is, bro. I also wanna say this, don't get me wrong, chasing women can also be a waste of time. I spent so much time chasing women, but it's because I didn't know what I was doing, right? That's not the program I teach because most guys, they go out and drink only because they wanna get girls. Like, let's be honest, bro. Would you go to the bar and club if you didn't wanna go and talk to girls? All the money, time, and energy you waste, plus you're destroying your mental health. These guys are idiots, bro. And I say this because that was me, man. I didn't know what I was doing. But when you're a socializer, you can approach and attract women in real life, have fun social circles, get invited to chill things like house parties, etc. And once you get a couple cool girls, you just like pick one and now that's your girl. Plus, if you get a quality girl, she'll actually help you out with your work and your purpose and stuff, bro. Fine, you don't have to join, but like, don't be that guy who can only talk to girls when he's hammered. Then when you finally do sober up in life, you're socially useless. This is such a wake up call for guys that finally stop drinking when they're like late 20s, early 30s. But all of a sudden they realize, wait a second, the only time I've ever talked to girls was when I was hammered. That's such a bad strategy, bro. You're 10 years behind all the guys that learned how to socialize at a younger age. So don't be that guy, bro. And I know it could be hard. Like as a young man, especially, a lot of our lives are built around boozing. Like, especially in Canada, it's cold half the year. So like booze is basically medicine at that point. Pretty much every time you're like going to a party or going out, there's always booze around. So your brain has like these neural pathways set up that are like associating pleasure with alcohol. So you gotta be careful, bro. Like you need to learn how to have fun without booze, but you need to replace them with things that are also fun. You just don't know it yet. Like making money, going hiking, going to the gym, traveling, learning an instrument, writing, whatever it is, bro. And then you ball hard on special occasions. My boy, Chris, we got a bunch of products here. He made a video on this where he talked about some guy he used to work with that was balling now. Instead of drinking every weekend, he just goes out like once a month. And when he does go out, he just goes balls to the wall, bro. Him, all his friends, guys and girls, they just get it out of their system. They let loose for one day and then boom, they're right back to work. I constantly hear guys saying, oh, like never do this, never do that. It's like, bro, you guys are all liars. Especially when you make money, from YouTube, you start bawling, you start banging girls, you start drinking and partying, bro. But then they'll get in front of the camera and be like, oh, like, I never drink alcohol. Like, shut the fuck up, bro. You know what you're doing. If you're a man on your purpose, I think two to three times per month is absolutely fine. I'm not a doctor, you know, but what I would recommend is just having a big blowout, maybe once or twice a month, and then boom, just go right back to work. And if you're one of those guys that you think you're more ambitious than your friends and you're having a hard time kind of convincing them, don't try and change them. It's gonna take way too long. You need to join a network of other men that are high value and working towards their goals. And that's why Socializer will be great for you because everybody in here is already doing cool stuff and meeting new people, trying new things, not just getting hammered every weekend in their buddy's garage. Now I'm also gonna end this video with this caveat right here because I would be a massive hypocrite if I didn't. From about the age of like 22 to about 25, 26, I went absolutely balls to the wall, degenerate, booze drinking legend for YouTube content. Because the thing is, I only ever really drank on video. It was like this fun party character I would play, right? It got so many views. I would do these Hoko videos and I would binge drink at each one of them while making a documentary about it. But I only did this like three or four times a year. Besides that, I would maybe drink like twice a month. I would go to these nightclubs all the time and I would do these interviews. And I was sober at least like 70, 80% of the time, man. I actually think clubs are very lame. Like it's just not my scene, but they make such good content. And that's why I filmed with them for so long. So if you're like me and you can find a way to hack the system, go out, meet a lot of girls, party, have fun, meet people, but also make money doing it and further your career doing it while being disciplined, you basically are like cheating the system, bro. You're having your cake and eating it too. So if you can do that, fair play to you. But not everybody is an absolute animal like I am. Otherwise there'd be a million of me. You know what I mean? Now, before we go, I just wanna remind you, the fact you are even watching this video right now and you are still here means that you are different than 99% of other men out there, just stuck in mediocrity. I am building an army of ambitious, motivated, driven men who wanna live awesome, fun social lives. And if that sounds like you, I invite you to join my army. Get in Discord, and then eventually, when you can afford it, join my socializer community as well. And yeah, if you enjoyed this video, watch this one next because it's gonna make a lot more sense now that you've watched this one. Click it and I will see you there.